Hello, good evening, and welcome to the weekend edition of Metro News. We are transmitting to you live from our studios here in Laboni, Accra. My name is Kwasi Afri. Now the news in details. Taiwan community faces imminent outbreak of cholera as a result of the indiscriminate disposal of waste. Parliamentary Select Committee on Communication says it will continue to monitor telcos and ensure they pay their taxes properly. Seven out of ten suspected bar thieves arrested by ECG and the police refused to appear before a by high court. World Bank President Jim Yong Kim challenges youth in Africa to develop innovative ways aimed at helping in fight against poverty. Well, so that was the headlines. Let's have the details of the news now. And Taifa, a sprawling community in the Ghana East municipality, faces imminent outbreak of cholera and other communicable diseases as a result of indiscriminate disposal of waste. Residents blame the current situation on the assembly, which they say has failed to clear the improvised landfill site and prosecute offenders. David Atto was in the community and has filed this report. Taifa Mal 9 is one of the sprouting communities in the Ga East municipality. Unfortunately, it lacks basic infrastructure, including well tarred access roads. The haphazard nature of construction makes movement cumbersome for motorists, while sanitation management is a major headache. This is one of the temporary sites at the heart of the community, and the scene is enough to tell the story. Concerned residents say because of improper supervision, people drop rubbish anywhere, which now threatens the railing that runs through this community. This equally puts the lives of commuters along the Accra and Sawam stretch at risk. Residents claim several appeals to the Ghana East Municipal Assembly and the Ghana Railway Company for support have been ignored. A man for sorry, free baby, a free tougher market to her, a you know, you the border through her back. The refuse is gradually swallowing the community and residents fear the outbreak of an epidemic. This caretaker also admits the situation is getting out of hand. but taking charge. Some people in the area drew our attention to the rail line, saying erosion is gradually weakening the slippers. That is the appeal to the Ghana Railway Authority and in fact to the Minister for Transport, uh, Honorable Jifa Ativo. It is your call and I know you will respond appropriately because residents uh, fear that there will be an unforeseen situation here where you have a rail or one of these uh, railway lines getting off and eventually affecting uh, lives and properties. <laughs> Well, that was my colleague David Atta reporting. Let's move away from sanitation now. And seven out of ten suspects who were recently arrested by a joint task force of the Electricity Company of Ghana and the Ghana Police Service have refused to appear before an Accra High Court. The accused persons were charged for intentionally interfering with supplies, distribution systems, meter and equipment generally termed illegal connection. An Accra Fast Truck High Court presided over by Dr. Walanyo Kutuku on the 12th of September, summoned 10 suspects for engaging in illegal connection and interruption of power supply. Out of the 10 suspects, three have so far submitted themselves for criminal proceedings. Paul Asibi Abariga is the prosecutor for Electricity Company of Ghana. Because we have a criminal session with you and we book an appointment and a date for that matter 
in that respect. And so you are obliged to be in court at all costs to go through the criminal process. And so once they don't come to court, this is what we have come to realize, that they have no incentive and they have no obligation any longer to come to court because now at least their power of, has been restored to them. He however indicated that if the action is repeated, the court would have no option than to issue a bench warrant for the arrest. And once you have been given due notice to appear in court and face trial and you refuse to come, we will serve you with what we call a summons. If after the summons you don't come again yet the next agenda, then we proceed to attempt to restrict the bond on your authorities. Just to make sure you are in court because you must go through this process. It's a normal, it's a, it is an obligation. The case has therefore been adjourned to 7th November 2015. And now, thieves have stolen four out of the seven electricity pole transformers serving the Tema motorway streetlights and some communities along the Accra Tema motorway. Officials of ECG say the 50 kVA transformer will cost them over 50,000 cities. The Accra Tema motorway is a 7.3 meters two lane dual carriageway having cement concrete surfacing with two meters beauty more surface dress shoulders. The 19-kilometer motorway forms an integral part of the National Route 1, starting from Aplau in the Volta region and ending at Alubo in the Western region. It is also part of the Trans-West Africa Highway, Abidjan to Lagos Corridor, linking the city of Accra, the Kotoka International Airport and Tema Port. Despite the importance of the 19-kilometer stretch, little investment has been done by successive government in ensuring that the road will lit especially at night. Just a few weeks ago, five stand pole transformers have been stolen on this busy and important road, leaving this whole stretch in total darkness. Officials of ECG are yet to come to terms as to how the transformers were stolen in glare view of motorists. This type of transformers is what we call the pole mounted. You can see that there is a pole and the transformer is in the middle where the bar is. The coiling inside is copper, so I'm sure that was why they removed it to go and sell the copper. The Accra East engineer of ECG believes those stealing the transformers are professional electrical engineers and hopes a modern security system would be put if in place in a way so that the treaters would be electrical arrested. technician, there is no way you can do this. Because for you to isolate the transformer from the high tension, you know, is that a life. You can easily get electrocuted and die. So it's the people doing it, they are people who know much about our system. They know much about how to isolate the transformer and disconnect it for safety. He also called on the general public to ask questions when they see suspicious characters tampering with ECG properties on the motorway. And away from that, Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Communications, Albert Adongo says, his outfit together with the National Communications Authority and Suba Info Solutions Limited would continue to monitor the operations of the telcos and ensure that they pay the right amount of tax to the state. The committee on Friday paid a working visit to the various telecommunication companies in Accra. Percy wanted to the amended communication service tax of May 2013, the Ghana Revenue Authority signed a five-year contract with IT firm to allow the latter to have physical access to their physical notes. Under the deal, Suba Info Solutions was supposed to install machines that would hook up with the notes of the telecom companies and electronically monitor revenue generation by the telcos and also ensure that they pay their taxes promptly. The visit by the Parliamentary Select Committee on Communications was to monitor at first hand whether Suba Info Solutions was indeed monitoring their tax revenue. The team visited the switch centers of MTN, Glow, Vodafone, Tigo, Airtel and Espresso. Chairman of the committee expressed satisfaction over Suba's work. You all are aware that uh, they have been given the contract by government to monitor tax revenue. We have followed up to see for ourselves the systems, their installations that enhances their work to carry out their monitoring activities as far as government revenue is concerned. He also assured that his outfit would continue to monitor developments in the telcos industry. Suba has been given the mandate to monitor revenue. 
tax revenue to government. Uh, ICH, uh, I'm, I'm not too sure, but it, it will appear that ICH has also the mandate to do the same, including some other activities. We are not very technical to enter into the challenges that exist, but uh, our inquiries is that these installations are there for revenue monitoring. The committee urged the telecommunication companies to continue to collaborate with management of Suba Info Solutions in order to make sure that the state receives the right amount of tax from the telcos. While you're still watching the weekend edition of Metro News live from Laboni in Accra, we'll be back shortly. Don't go away. Well, this is Metro News. Welcome back from the break. Let's continue now. And World Bank President Jim Yong Kim has praised Ghana for working to reduce extreme poverty over the last two decades. According to the World Bank President, global reports indicate that this generation has the greatest opportunity to end extreme poverty by 2030. But he also cautions that ex this extraordinary phenomenon will be difficult, especially during this time of low global economic growth low commodity prices, and pending interest rate hikes. These observations came up when President Mahama hosted the World Bank president here in Accra. Africa experienced robust economic growth over the past two decades, growing at an average annual rate of 4.5%. Ghana equally posted a strong growth performance, more than a decade of stable annual GDP growth rate, between 4 to 5 percent. Addressing the media at a joint press conference after a closed-door meeting between President Mahama and President of the World Bank, Ghana was appraised as doing well in instituting programs to reduce extreme poverty. In our own small way here in Ghana, and despite well-known challenges, we were able to halve poverty in a period of two decades, and we know we could have even achieved a lot more than that. Poverty is largely a rural phenomenon, about 15 percent of our rural population suffers from extreme poverty, compared with about 2% for our urban populations. Ghana, like most of the world, is going through some economic challenges. And with weak and non-existent data, planning becomes difficult. President Mahama noted a number of initiatives government has ruled out to tackle the issue of inequality. I've also invited the bank to consider a new program developed by the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority for the Northern Savannah Ecological Zone. The program is similar to the Sahil Initiative, and which I think should be extended to cover 
the entire savanna area of Africa because of the potential to become the food basket of not only the continent but the world. Global economic downturns are affecting economies around the world, but Jim Young Kim is advising that Ghana stays the course. We're in a period in which leaders and people of countries are going to have to make some tough decisions because the economic headwinds are blowing very strongly. The countries that make those tough decisions, that stay the course, that make the reforms that they, that they have to make, will do better in the short term in terms of accessing capital on the global markets and will definitely do better in the medium and the long term. Government was also lauded for making the right investments in the field of education and health care. From the presidency for Metro News, Frank Nyonato, Accra. Well, let's stay with the World Bank President, Jim Yong Kim, who has challenged the youth in Africa to develop innovative ways aimed at helping the continent fight poverty. He said this at a shared prosperity forum organized at the University of Ghana in commemoration of the End Poverty Day, which brought together himself and three other panelists to discuss how to fight poverty in Africa. My colleague, Fever Nunu, was at the forum and has filed this report. The panel engaged in discussions on a raft of issues, including the use of technology as a driver of opportunities in Africa, using business data to fight poverty, ensuring relevant and quality education delivered in the right medium, and strengthening agriculture in Africa. The forum brought together Minister of Education, Professor Jenana Obukwajiman, the President of the African Development Bank, Akin Wumi Adesina, Entrepreneur Tony Elumelo, and Jim Young Kim, President of the World Bank, who exchanged thought-provoking ideas on topical issues affecting the growth of Africa. The President of World Bank stressed that education remains key to the fight against poverty in Africa. The World Bank has shifted tremendously. What we say today about the importance of health education and social protection is completely different than what we were saying 20 years ago because the evidence is overwhelming. The evidence is overwhelming that better health outcomes lead not just to healthier people, but to better, uh, faster economic growth, that education outcomes, not, not just dollars into school buildings, but educational outcomes lead directly to uh, economic growth. He urged Africa to learn from the success story of Korea. The Korea of 1959 uh, is now the Africa of 2015. We talk about Africa rising, but in quiet conversations, you hear all kinds of talk about basket case, impossible. Don't ever believe it, and certainly don't believe it about yourself. The Minister of Education, Jane Nana Opokwajiman, spoke of the need to broaden the scope of education on the continent. It is not about the emphasis on science and math at the detriment of others. We're talking about entrepreneurship, we're talking about in industrialization, we need these subjects. And, but more importantly, is the medium through which the subject is taught. An entrepreneur, Tony Elumilo, called for good governance, transparency, and accountability on the part of African politicians. Governors, we've seen, in fact, in the afternoon when someone was speaking, fragile states have more poverty issues than say that don't have fragility. And so let's begin to deal with poor, poor corruption, security, poor governance, and also for investors who want to develop Africa by our investment, we need to have policies and sanctity of contracts. At the Sina Akinwumi, president of African Development Bank, also challenged African governments to, as a matter of urgency, prioritize agriculture and invest in girl child education. Well, so there were a series of activities marking the End Poverty Day lunch as uh, presidents of the World Bank and the African Development Bank have challenged African leaders to come together to feed and light up Africa. They believe it's been long overdue for Africa to be in the dark and exist as Museum for Poverty. The duo made this pronouncement during a ceremony to launch the End Poverty Day at Manchabuna here in Accra. Over the past 20 years, according to a World Bank report, the Ghanaian economy has almost grown more quickly than the economies of other sub-Saharan African countries and at rates similar to those of lower middle income countries. It is also one of the few African countries to meet its Millennium Development Goals target of halving poverty by 2015. During a special occasion to commemorate the end of Poverty Day in Accra, President of the World Bank, Jim Yong Kim, commended Ghana for progress it has made in reducing poverty but challenged the country to do more. Ghana has invested in its people, 
especially in education. And today, the number of workers who have no education is a tiny fraction in this country. But we know that many reforms still await. The macroeconomic uh, situation is difficult. We need to invest more in infrastructure and skills development. We need to increase social protection. President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akin Wumi Adesina believes it's about time African leaders lift their countries from darkness and adequately feed them. On his part, President Mahama believes ending poverty isn't just a dream, but an occasion for private partners to join hands with him to better the lives of Ghanaians. I've held useful discussions with President Kim of the World Bank and President Adesina of the African Development Bank to aim towards resolving not only the energy deficits in Africa, but also leveraging Africa's comparative advantage in food production, both to create jobs for our young people and to feed Africa's growing population. The event attracted several dignitaries, including traditional rulers. We have some more stories coming up. Please stay with us. Well, you welcome back from the break. Let's do some more stories now. And motorists and other road users on the Asikuma Peve Road in the Volta region are expressing worry over the delay in the execution of a contract, a situation residents say is causing a great deal of discomfort. Christian Ahodi has more. The Asikuma Peve Road forms part of the first phase of the Eastern Corridor Road, an initiative by government to link the south through the eastern part of the country to the northern part. The road, when completed, will go a long way to ease the difficulty traders go through in bringing goods down south. Construction of the first phase of the road from Asikuma to Pebe, which began some two years ago, has now come to a standstill since the 10th of June this year. At our visit to the site, motorists expressed frustration over the delay in completion of the work. Yeah, we are, we are all praising the government for the, this initiative. But it becomes a very sad one to us, people who are living from uh, Asikuma to Pebe, because uh, a lot of the cars, they have abandoned uh, applying the road here just because of the nature of the road. Highways, I think they are in charge of this road. They should make sure that their contractors come back and do what they are supposed to do and do it well. Because spare parts, we have to change our tires all the time. And vehicles will not even take us to Pever because of the bad nature of the road. The resident engineer in charge of the ongoing construction when contacted could not offer any tangible reason. Uh, they have a contractual obligation to come back to site. And so I think that is their only assurance. Contractually, they have to come back to site. They raised some 
problems, some constraints, and that constraint has been addressed by the clients. Uh, their IPCs have been paid and their review of rates problem has also been solved. So I don't see why they will not come back to site. The district chief executive for the South Dai district, Kafui Bekui, appealed for calm and assured that his outfit would work hard to bring the contractor back on site. Metro News will keep you updated. Now, the Volta River Authority and the various utility companies have justified why they need more than 200% increment in utility tariffs to be able to sustain their operations. According to the Director of Planning and Business Development at the Volta River Authority, the company currently owes $1.3 billion and this needs urgent intervention. The various utility companies, including the Ghana Water Company Limited, Volta River Authority, Electricity Company of Ghana, and the Ghana Grid Company, are looking for a more than 200% increment in tariffs. But Ghanaians are prepared to pay close to 75% more for power if their current load shedding improves. Many have argued that the continuous increment in utility tariffs is as a result of the huge debt government or the various utility companies. Our estimation is that 30 pesos should be enough. And out of this 30 pesos, 26 pesos is just for fuel. Okay? Now, presently, we are being given 14.6 pesos. Now, the 14.6 pesos is not even enough to buy the fuel. If you use the commodity, you have to pay for it at its price. I'm like, we are, we, we are in a situation where everybody in Ghana now knows how much it costs to run a generator. We sell the water at one Ghana city, 78 pesos per every cubic meter of water. So if you subtract 1.78 from eight cities, you see that you get six Ghana cities, uh, 22 pesos, which is, that is a loss. So that is why on this basis, we are asking the PURC to have an upward review of this particular price. This is what the Trade Union Congress has to say. Our immediate reaction is that uh, the figures they are giving are just not acceptable. We will uh, digest the issues and make a formal representation to them. The PULC employs automatic adjustment formula to track and incorporate movements in key determining factors to reflect cost of water and electricity. Well, in the sector of education now, the Board of Governors of the Commonwealth University has honored Dr. George Eric Jenfi, Director of Operations at the National Lutheran Authority, with a doctorate degree in public administration. The gesture, according to management of the university, is in recognition of his leadership roles and dedication to work. Dr. George Jenfi is a chartered marketer and holds a graduate diploma in international marketing from the London School of International Business, a postgraduate diploma in management studies from another London university, and an MBA from the London South Bank University. His recognition by Board of Governors of the Commonwealth University only adds to the accolades chalked by the current Director of Operations at the National Lottery Authority. I've learned a lot on the job as well and I've attended a lot of um, capacity building programs and uh, learning um, programs as well. Um, so this comes as a feather in the cap uh, to actually spur me on to even do better. Because, as I said, I was wondering um, how um, they identified me or located me, but as it is, um, hard work pays. So, um, it's, I'm really elated for this honor than me by the Commonwealth University. This will spur me on to even do better, and at least it will tell me to brighten the corner wherever I find myself, because hard work pays. Proud to joining the National Lotteries Authority, Dr. George Eric Jemphy was the managing partner of George & Associates, a business strategy consulting firm. Taifa community faces imminent outbreak of cholera as a result of the indiscriminate disposal of waste. Parliamentary Select Committee on Communication says it will continue to monitor telcos and ensure they pay their taxes properly. Seven out of ten suspected power thieves arrested by ECG and the police refused to appear before an Accra High Court.
World Bank President Jim Byung Kim challenges youth in Africa to develop innovative ways aimed at helping in the fight against poverty. Well, and that's all about it for this weekend's edition of Metro News. My name is Kwasi Efriye. Thanks for watching.